Hey everyone, this is Mike Minter with Financial Synergies. Uh, I am the Chief Investment Officer and today we're going to be looking at the best performing stocks over the last 25 years. Uh, I always find this kind of data interesting uh, just to look back and there's always some surprises, a lot of surprises actually in, in data like this. And um, in this particular time frame, we're looking back over the last 25 years. I've just kind of zeroed in on the top 10 stocks top 10 performing stocks over that time frame. So it's from uh, November 30th, 1998 uh, through November 30th of 2023. And I think there's there's probably a couple on here that you you may just guess what would have been in that, uh, in that list, but uh, there's definitely a lot of surprises on here, definitely for me, but uh, let's, let's kind of jump right into it. So here we have the list. So this is the, the top 10 stocks uh, over this time frame, so over over a 25 year period, and the number one performing stock over this time frame is Monster Beverage Corporation. Uh, certainly, a little bit of a household name. I mean, you've probably seen the energy drinks in the in the aisle, and uh, so it's it's just not an un, unknown stock, but it definitely uh, would surprise a lot of people that that was literally the number one performing stock uh, in the country over that that time frame. Uh, so Monster Beverage is here. So a whopping, let's see here, one hundred five thousand seven hundred eighty-eight point seven percent return over that time frame. Just astonishing. Just crazy, crazy numbers. Uh, and rounding out the list, we have Decker's Outdoor Corp. Again, not necessarily household name, but maybe not unknown. Apple. Everybody, I think, knows Apple, and I think. A lot of people probably would have guessed that was on the list, but uh, certainly had a stellar uh, period uh, over this last 25 years. Now, not without its massive ups and downs, don't get me wrong, uh, but certainly a stellar uh, performer and uh, the largest company in the world, essentially. Uh, Old Dominion, that's a, that's a surprise to me. I mean, you don't typically think of freight line companies as a high-flying growth stock or top performer, but... Really did well, obviously, over this time frame. And then we have Copart, the Middleby Corporation, Clean Harbors, uh, Texas Pacific Land Corp. There's another one. Wouldn't really expect a Land Corp to scream higher, uh, like a high flyer uh, growth stock over this period, but but it did. And then FTI Consulting, uh, not really that familiar with that stock, honestly. And then uh, NVR uh, Corporation. So. Um, that rounds out the the list. So, uh, if you had let's say invested ten thousand bucks in Monster, I'm just zeroing in on Monster here. What would that look like in terms of actual growth? So, over the last twenty five years, if you would have popped in ten thousand uh, bucks, the investment into Monster Beverage would be worth twelve point nine one million dollars today. So. Just a staggering figure and uh, fun to talk about and, and look back, but the reality is the uh, chances of that happening uh, pretty much slim to, to none. Uh, not only picking the stock extremely hard, but having that much invested in it over that time frame, and more importantly, actually hanging on to it over a 25 year period. Uh, I would argue would be almost impossible, and, and we'll talk a little bit about why. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that, but the reality is finding the stock and you know picking it is just half the battle. The other half is actually hanging on to it long enough to actually see uh, the full brunt of that growth. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, but just astonishing growth, fun to talk about, exciting stock and all that, no, no doubt about it. So what would you have to do, what would you have to endure to achieve that, that level of return? And again, we're talking about Monster here. So Monster suffered four separate drops of 50% or more, so half its value. It also lost more than two thirds of its value twice and more than three quarters once. And I've got a little bit more data on that as well. Those are pretty staggering numbers then uh, the next point here is really important is that it's traded below and this is this is a little bit of a different time frame here 
I'm looking back now over 1995 to 2015. Uh, I, it's hard sometimes to find really accurate, relevant data uh, based on the time frame you're looking at. So it's a little bit different time frame, but this is from a 20 year period from 95 to 2015, just to give you an idea of how volatile and how tough it was to hang on to this thing. Uh, over this 20 year period, it actually traded below its previous all time high. So essentially under the high water mark, 94% of the days during that period. So you were not back to its previous all-time high that entire 20 years if you held that stock 94% uh, of the days during that period uh, you were under the high watermark, the, the previous all-time high price for that stock. That's a staggering number and it, it, I can't even imagine what it would have been like to have a significant chunk of change in that stock over that time frame uh, with these numbers, uh, the drawdowns and the, just the performance that takes you on wild ride to say the least. Uh, and here's another uh, killer. The maximum drawdown ever for the Monster Beverage Corporation was 96.53%. You almost lost all your money. And that occurred, that kind of ended on December 13th of 1995. Uh, recovery, from that point took 2,045 trading sessions. That's it's almost six years uh, to get back to square one. <laughs> that's that's a hell of a ride. Um, I would I would submit that most people cannot uh, handle that e e either emotionally, uh, maybe even physically. Uh, that that talk about keeping you up at night with any significant dollars in this thing and, and that would do it. Uh, so this stock almost went to nothing uh, back in 1995. Um, so just again, just some, some stats that are pretty eye popping, but kind of, you know, it begs the question, would you even want to have been invested in this thing uh, and been on that ride uh, over this period, uh, knowing the, the, the amount of time you had been underwater and the, man, the craziness of almost going to zero. So uh, it, it's it's a rough ride to say the least. Uh, so some key takeaways here. Let's talk about a few things here. So uh, number one is picking top forming stocks is really hard. I think that probably goes without saying, but, but I do think that sometimes people assume that picking winning stocks is easy and the reality is it's not only hard, but it's extremely rare. In fact, most professional actively managed funds, they underperform the broad markets. That, that's just a fact. Um, it doesn't mean that there aren't those out there that do outperform, they do, but it's extremely rare. Uh, so it's very, very difficult to consistently, and it, it, and it doesn't mean that it can't happen in isolation, it does all the time, but consistently over time for you know relevant time frames, it, it's just really, really, really difficult. Uh, does it mean you shouldn't own stocks? I absolutely believe you, you should. I believe it's the great, you know, stock market, the greatest wealth generation machine uh, on the planet. Uh, but doing so in a diversified way, I think makes more sense uh, to start our philosophy but uh, so that's that's one takeaway in, in looking at you know numbers like this uh, the other is that most stocks actually underperform the broad market so um, I think sometimes this this comes as a surprise as well but the truth is that the most publicly traded companies uh, they're, they're kind of duds they don't they don't tend to outperform the broad market in fact there's a huge chunk of them that just flat out cease to exist or uh, end up being delisted from, from the index itself. And so it's very common for a relatively concentrated bunch of stocks to be the main driver of returns for that particular index. So what that means is what's left over, again, they tend to be duds. And think about all the thousands of stocks in there that you could have selected based on any number of really great analysis that just end up going absolutely nowhere. 
and by not diversifying or you know maybe going too concentrated in one area in a basket of stocks or you know one stock um, you've 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 foregone what could have been some really great uh, you know meaningful returns um, so it's 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 a risky risky venture there uh, and then of course not only picking stocks and and you know is hard but hanging on to those stocks is is even harder um, because we've seen the ride that they, they can take you on. And it's not just isolated a monster, of course. There are plenty of high flyers in there that have lost almost all their value um, at one time or another. I mean, some big names in that category are Amazon uh, and Netflix. Uh, even hanging on to those over the long term has been a, been a rough ride if you didn't have anything else around it to cushion it or you were too concentrated. So... Uh, even, you know, household names, uh, high flyers, um, massive companies in isolation, they're tough to hang on to. They really are. Uh, it can be quite the emotional roller coaster. And there's huge opportunity costs. So that's another one. So be aware of the opportunity cost in getting the stock picks wrong. So, it, you know, achieving market rates of return in an index fund, for example, is very, very admirable. I mean, those are great. Those just long-term averages would be great returns and probably would fit the bill for achieving most people's financial goals, retirement planning goals. Um, you don't need to shoot the lights out in most cases. I, I can't speak for everybody, but I think for most people, um, uh, achieving a, a, a respectable rate of return, a diversified portfolio using possibly exchange-traded funds, uh, mutual funds, things that will give you broad exposure to stocks and asset classes uh, for most people is probably the way to go uh, because the opportunity cost in getting it wrong, it means you can't retire or it means that you, even worse, you end up losing money rather than actually making any gains at all. That is what we call catastrophic loss. That is very difficult to come back from given the amount, given enough time, you can recover. But as you get later on in life, it becomes very, very difficult to overcome uh, bad decisions like that. So just be really, really careful uh, with any level of concentration or individual stocks. I've actually seen it quite a bit in my career. Uh, and it's heartbreaking to see somebody really impact their their retirement in such a negative way, or honestly, it, it, it pretty much blows it up. It's, it's, it can be a heartbreaking situation. So just, just be careful. So again, don't, don't go overboard and concentrating in too few stocks, trying to pick that next massive winner, like a monster uh, stock or, you know, even Apple, Let, don't get me wrong. Apple's a fantastic stock, but even Apple is susceptible to extreme company specific risk. And there have been periods in Apple's history where it was a complete dud and went absolutely nowhere for 20 years. So again, it's it's easy to look at stocks that have performed well recently and say, man, that's I should have bought that. But remember, there's no free lunch here and there are a lot of downsides, uh, even if you got a stock pick uh, right. Uh, so just just remember that. So. Uh, really and truly, broad diversification is the key. So for most people, that's going to achieve a, a very desirable rate of return. And it should be enough to achieve most people's long-term goals given enough time. So uh, just my thoughts on it. Uh, always fun to look back on things like top, top performing stocks or sectors or anything. I always get a kick out of it. Uh, but it always comes with it with a caveat. Uh, and so here's just a few key takeaways to, to remember. So um, guys, I, I hope you found this maybe interesting, fun, or uh, informative, but uh, I had fun. It was always a kick uh, to look back on these types of things. But uh, if, you, uh, if you have any questions or want to talk about your finances or investments or need help in financial planning, um, hit us up. You know, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, hit that button down there, so that subscribe button in the in the video area down there. And, um, you know, if you, if you enjoyed this type of content and um, yeah, uh, 
subscribe and, and keep watching our videos and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, guys. Thanks. See you again soon.